In the deep, deep forest known as Lost Forests a demon has taken residence on the forbidden and decaying castle. He is a sorcerer feared for his ruthless nature. His name is Zagan. One day a lady gets assaulted by a sorcerer near this castle. He gets killed by another sorcerer and that sorcerer is Zagan, our MC seeing someone get killed made the lady lose her conscience. Our MC gets terrified as he doesn't know what to do with her. The truth is that he is not cruel like the saying. He don't know how to interact with the people as he was a shut-in since childhood. He reverses the damage and decides to teleport the girl somewhere safe. When he draws the circle for the teleportation he realizes someone is interfering with it. When he looks around he sees his friend Barbados. Barbados asks Zagan whether he disturbed his party. Zagan replies that, he was teaching a lesson to a creep who was making some fuss in his yard. Barbados gets a glimpse of the girl behind and says the girl has got good to be a sacrifice. Zagan disagrees with it and teleports the girl as he was not interested in it and sacrificial sorcery was not his style. He then asks Barbados to leave him alone so that he could sleep peacefully. Barbados tells Zagan he has got news for him. One of the thirteen archdemons, Masokius is dead and all of his legacy is going to be on auction. Archdemons are the pinnacle of sorcery. Getting the title of archdemon gives you an infinite amount of mana and power, and Masokius was the longest one to be an archdemon. So they decide to go to the auction. Barbados tells Zagan to help him with some money on auction and for that he would help him to pick some chicks. They see high security because of the recent kidnappings for sacrificial sorcery. They reach the site of the auction where they see strong sorcerers who are competing with each other for the 13th archdemon's position. Now the last item on the auction showed up. It was a member of a legendary race, elf and she was one of the rarest among them due to her white hair. When the bid was about to start for 10,000 coins, Zagan seals the deal with 1 million gold coins. In reality Zagan has fallen in love with her. Zagan comes on the ground. He notices that she is bound by a collar on her neck which stops her from running away. And thus the story of a man who thought women were trouble a moment ago fell in love with a girl, starts. He brought the girl to his home but he gets into a problem as he doesn't know what to ask her. When he was having trouble speaking to her, the girl spoke to him, Master how are you going to kill me? If I get to know I can prepare for it. Hearing it made a blow to our MC as he jumps on and says, No I am not going to kill you, I am a good sorcerer and I have no intention of killing or torturing you. She introduces herself. Her name is Nephilia and she has no family. If her master finds her name distasteful, he can call her just Nephi. He gets aroused after hearing her cute name. Nephi asks him why he brought her if he doesn't need her for experimentation as slaves live for a purpose and she doesn't have one, then there is no meaning in living. Zagan realizes that she has been treated as a slave till childhood and was probably told that she was going to be an experiment or a sacrifice. Zagan tells her that she doesn't need to worry over stuff like that as from now on he is her master and she will live for his sake. Zagan decides to give Nephi a room. He takes her to the top of the castle. While taking the stairs, Nephi slips her feet and as she was about to fall Zagan grabs her hand and takes the stairs while grabbing her hand. When they opened the room on the top, they saw a guillotine. Zagan immediately closes the door and blasts away the guillotine and thus the room gets cleared. Nephi enters the balcony and looks at the moon. She thanks Zagan for giving her a place to live. He didn't really get a wink of sleep till morning because of Nephi. As her room was in no state to use she slept in the main room beside him. Seeing her so defenseless made his imagination run wild and he was not able to sleep that entire night, when Nephi woke up she saw Zagan and greeted him with a good morning but he didn't reply back as he didn't know what to say. He then changes the subject by giving her food. While eating Nephi asks him why he is eating the same thing as her. When Zagan asks her why she asked that she replies him that she is lucky to get something to eat and it is strange for him to eat the same as her as that food is fed to slaves like her, 
Then he realizes that the thing he eats barely qualifies as a food and he is eating it for years. Nephi then realizes that if she doesn't do something he is going to die. Nephi suggests that she will make the food for him from then on. Zagan jumps out of excitement as he is going to see the girl he loves cook for him. Zagan then decides to go to town to buy groceries. They weren't able to get a ride as Zagan used all his money on buying Nephi. They decide to walk to town. Suddenly a group of bandits attacked the wagon. Zagan didn't pay any attention as it didn't concern him. But when he looked at how Nephi got terrified, he sent thunder to the bandits. He tells Nephi to hide behind his back. He throws away a bandit who attacks him. Then another sorcerer interferes between them and attacks Zagan with a fire spell. But the spell didn't do any damage to Zagan. The sorcerer casts another spell but Zagan turns the spell against him and the sorcerer gets blasted away. The bandits ran away after seeing this. Then he turns to Nephi and says, Bandits like them are like dust to be brushed, you don't have to fear at all. The passengers thank him for saving their life and the wagon owner gives him money for saving them and tells him that they can come with them to the town. At the town Zagan gets confused about what to buy for Nephi as he doesn't know what a girl wants. He then notices Nephi having trouble walking with her long dress and decides to buy her a dress. They enter a cloth shop where they get welcomed by a harpy. He asks her to give Nephi a suitable outfit. The harpy girl's name was Manuela. Manuela notices the collar on Nephi's neck and takes Nephi to change. After a while Nephi comes out wearing an erotic dress. Seeing this made Zagan shy and he tells Manuela to give her a normal dress. And thus Nephi gets a maid outfit for her. When they leave the shop, Manuela tells Nephi that she is lucky to get a master who cares about her. He takes Nephi to a workshop to know whether the collar on Nephi's neck can be removed. The dwarf man says that he is helpless as the collar is imbued with magic and if it is opened in the wrong way, it will cost Nephi her neck. So he should open the collar with the original key. Zagan thanks him for giving him the information and he gives him money but he declines it. The dwarf man and the daughter were once saved by Zagan and because of that he can't accept anything from him due to the debt he owns. After doing the shopping Zagan takes Nephi to a restaurant. When it was about to eat Zagan saw Nephi hesitating as it was her first time using a fork and knife as she has never eaten like this before. Zagan tells her to eat freely as there is no one who will stop her from it. Nephi uses the fork to pick out the sides but doesn't succeed in it. Zagan gives her a spoon and she eats with it. Now Zagan's turns come, like Nephi he also gets in trouble on using a fork. Nephi sees it and feeds him using her spoon. This makes Zagan embarrassed and he also feeds her using the same spoon. They get embarrassed as others notice them doing this and they leaves the restaurant. Thank you for watching, 